Hey guys, this is Tasma from Tasma's Crochet Creations, and in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to crochet my Tunisian crochet hookcase. Your beginner friendly pattern. It is all done in Tunisian simple stitch. Um, it is very, very basic. Anyone can do this who's just starting out Tunisian crochet. Or if you're an advanced crocheter in Tunisian crochet, anyone could do this pattern. Um, so yeah, for this Tunisian uh, crochet hook case, we're going to be making two panels. A front and a back panel. This is my front panel already done and made. Um, this is about uh, 1.2 meters long, um, which is the size of these Tunisian crochet hooks. These are my non-interchangeable crochet hooks and these crochet hooks range from three and a half to 12 millimeters these are basically afghan uh, tunisian crochet hooks so yeah this this tunisian crochet hook measures sorry hook case <laughs> measures the measurement here is 22 centimeters and the length is 120 125 centimeters sorry um so for the materials um we'll be needing a darning needle, some scissors, uh, a measuring tape if you want to go by the measurements or the stitch count or row count, anything works for you. And then we'll be using a 5mm uh, Tunisian crochet hook. Um, so yeah, the yarn that I used is this brand here. Um, this is 100% acrylic, it's a lightweight 3, um, and it asks for, I think that's a 3mm crochet hook. This is uh, an ocean kind of colour, obviously, because of uh, the colours here, you get white, so light brown, dark brown, and then blues, obviously, <laughs> reminds me of the ocean. And then for this, uh, the other yarn, for the um, back panel, I'm using this, I'm, I've called it the forest green um because as you can see it looks like the forest <laughs> so it's got a uh, light green dark green white gray and black in here so as i've mentioned um you'll be making two panels a front and a back panel then we'll be um, doing a single crochet around to um, join the two panels and then we will crochet six strips of um six strips of tunisian crochet um that will hold the hooks in place um and i have already crocheted one here flat like that and um we'll sew this down um we'll we'll pin this down over the hooks um and then we'll sew it down like that so yeah well let's get started with the tutorial okay so now um so to begin uh, we're going to take our yarn, whatever yarn you're using, and whatever hook size to correspond with, uh, with the yarn that you're using. We are going to form a slip knot. So the way I do my slip knots is that I wrap the yarn around my two fingers like that. Technically form an X, turn it around, and then I yarn under, and I pull through. And then I pull that tight. And there is our slip knot. Okay. So to begin, we are going to chain 35 chains. Okay. And also with Tunisian crochet, um, whatever chain you start off with, um, you'll keep the same stitch count. Um, so... What I'm trying to say is you won't chain one or anything at the beginning of a row. You will immediately start going to the next stitch and um, continuing with your stitches. Okay, so we're going to chain 35. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And a chain is simply just a, um, it's just a yarn over the hook and pull through that is literally all that a, a chain is it's just a yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook so so far i have one two three four five six seven eight 
nine, ten chains. So we need to do this since we have 35 chains. Okay, so I have finished all with my 35 chains, as you can see. So once you have completed with your 35 chains, as I've mentioned before, um, your first chain counts as a stitch. In normal crochet, um, your first chain never counts as a stitch, but this chain counts as a stitch. But you will immediately go into the, the back bump of the chain. Now I normally go through the back bump, you don't have to, but going into the back bump of the chain um, just needs up your work. Okay, so once we insert into the back of the chain, we'll yarn over and pull through. Now with Tunisian crochet we keep the loops on the hook. We don't we don't yarn over and pull through or whatever the case is. You know we we Tunisian crochet is when we go along the chains and we pick up stitches like knitting but it's different to knitting. <laughs> so you'll pick up um you'll pick up loops in every stitch. So Tunisian crochet is made up of a um forward pass and a return pass so we are basically doing a forward pass at the moment um which is basically picking up of the loops a return pass is when we go back on those loops and we yarn over and pull through two until we get to the beginning okay so again we're just going to insert into the back bumps of the chain yarn over pull through into the next chain whoopsie into the next chain there we go yarn over and pull through into the next chain this one's a bit small there we go yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through so the amount of chains that you chained is the amount of loops you should have on your hook by the time we are done um by the time we are done uh bringing up all the all the loops Okay, so you can just uh, keep on doing this until we get to the end and I'll meet up with you once we're at the end. Okay, so now I've come to the end of my chains and I'm just going to show you again um, how to pull up the stitches. So again we're going to pull through, go through the chains, pull up a loop, uh, go into the next chain. And pull up a loop, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, go into the last chain, and pull up a loop. Okay, so there are all your loops on your hook, and um, it is best to um, to when you when you are working to keep your loops as close to the hook as possible, but also not to overcrowd. The hook like that you know you just want just enough loops near your hook so that you can actually pull your hook through the loops nicely um yeah so you can just pull the loops through your hook sorry you can pull the you can pull your hook through the loops nicely okay so now we've just completed the forward pass and now we're going to do the return pass so when you think of the forward pass and return pass um for the forward pass you must think that your hook is going forward you're picking up the loops and you're going forward when you're doing the return pass you're going back on these loops okay so to the, to do the return pass always at the beginning of the return pass you always want to yarn over and pull through the first loop on your hook you it's basically a chain one 
for every row that we begin with we have to chain one at the beginning so to continue we're going to yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and it forms these like vertical bars um they are actually very easy to see as you can see so we are going to keep repeating this process we yarn over and pull through two yarn over and pull through two until we get to the end um so yeah this is the return pass okay where we just yarn over and pull through two yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two sorry that was actually all through one pull through two and then yarn over pull through two make sure like what happened there is i accidentally sorry i accidentally went through two vertical bars as you can see be careful not to let that happen because you're basically you're basically doing a decrease if you do that so you need to make sure that you're always yarning over and pulling through two yarning over and pulling through two you got to be very careful not to pull through um two vertical bars instead of one okay so you're just going to keep on doing this until you reach the end so yeah, you just yarn over and pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, until the very last two loops on your hook. Okay, there is one row. There is one row of our vertical bars or our Tunisian simple stitch. So now you will repeat this process. Okay, so actually, sorry, I'm jumping the gun here. <laughs> okay, so again we do not chain one this first loop on a hook counts as a stitch um so we are actually gonna yarn over sorry not yarn over sorry um we're gonna go under the vertical bar as you can see here there's like a vertical bar here we're gonna go under it yarn over and pull through now i got two loops on your hook again you're gonna go underneath the next vertical bar you're going to go under the next vertical bar like that, yarn over, pull through, it's three loops on your hook. Next vertical bar, go under, yarn over, pull through. Okay, and you just repeat the process until you get to the other side. So you're just inserting your hook under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. And you're going to continuously... Um, carry your loops on your hook um, for the forward pass and you are going to want to repeat these two sets which form one row these two sets form one row of vertical bars um, so you're going to keep repeating these steps until you have 177 rows or 177 vertical bars um and this length will be just enough to um to hold in the tunisian crochet hooks okay, so we just go under vertical bar yarn over and pull through under vertical bar yarn over pull through uh, under vertical bar yarn over pull through under vertical bar yarn over pull through and for me personally, when I get to the end, you see there is this last like vertical bar here. Um, that is basically our chain one from the beginning of the row. Um, so what I personally like to do is when I insert my hook into that, um, that last vertical bar, I personally like to go through, I don't know if you can see it, there's like one bar here in the front and there's one at the back there. So there's one here and one there. Let me actually get my darning needle so that I can show you nicely what I'm talking about. Um, so here is the first vertical bar, as you can see. Just behind it, there is another vertical bar. So as you can see, there's one and two loops. Okay. So what I personally like to do is I like to go through the front like that 
but also the back so it really helps if you push your hook through at the same time and not go through the loops individually so these are the going through one and the four there I was going through the front and the back loop of that uh, vertical bar okay so again I'm gonna do a few rows on camera with you um, just so that you can get the gist of uh, the pattern and what it looks like okay so again to start off we are doing the the return pass now because we've got all of our loops on hook so to do the return pass again we're just going to start off with a chain one and then you're going to yarn over pull through two 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 and pull through two and pull through two okay Yeah, now I'm just pulling through the last two loops. And there we go. We've done another set of vertical bars. So now we've done two rows. Okay, so now again we repeat the process. The first loop counts as a stitch. We go straight under the next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. Next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. Next vertical bar, yarn over, pull up a loop. Next vertical bar, yarn over pull up a loop next vertical bar yarn over pull up a loop and again you just repeat this process um until you reach the end um so yeah this is a very basic tutorial um for the tunisian simple stitch uh tunisian crochet hook case <laughs> Um, it is a very simple pattern and anyone can do this really. It is really beginner friendly and anyone who's just starting out with crochet or Tunisian crochet can do this. Um, so yeah, again we just repeat the process of going under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, under vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. So you get to the end. And I'm almost at the end now. Oops. Okay, there we go. Okay, so again, into our last vertical bar we are going to uh, go through the front and the back don't know if you can see that clearly go through the front and the back loop like that yarn over and pull through and there we have all of our 35 loops on our hook again and now to do the return pass again we're going to chain one always on the return pass we chain one Yarn over, pull through two, 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 yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and now I'm starting off with the black, sorry. <laughs> and now the yarn is changing into the black thread. Um, so yeah, as you can see, now we have three rows of vertical bars. So we will just repeat this process of inserting under the vertical bar, yarn over and pull through, and you're just going to continue picking up loops um, in every vertical bar. You're going to pick up a loop and you're going to keep your loops on your hook. And then when you go for the return pass, um, you are going to start off by chaining one at the beginning of the row and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, all the way until we get to the end again. So as you can see, we're just inserting under the vertical bar and yarning over and pull through. Again, at the last row, sorry, at the last vertical bar of of the row, 
we're going to insert through the front and the back loop of that vertical bar. For me, I just like to do that because it kind of neatens off the edge a bit more, in my opinion. So again, for the return part, we're going to yarn over, pull through one, sorry, make a chain one, basically. And then we're going to yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, so two, all the way until the end. So now that's the fifth row done. Am I right? One, two, three, four. No, four rows. <laughs> Sorry, my calculations are off. Those are now our four rows of vertical bars done. And then you would just repeat those two sets, the return and forward pass. Sorry, the forward pass and the return pass. Um, and your work will curl a little bit like this. It's just the way it's an Asian crochet is. Um, but don't worry, when we do our crochet border, um, not crochet border, when we crochet the two panels together, it will, um, it will flatten the work, um, and we won't have this curling. Um, so yeah, now you can just go off, and you can make 177 rows of these vertical bars. Yeah. Okay, guys. So once you have completed the 177 rows of the, of the hook case, um, we are now going to um, close off the end. Um, we're going to close off this top row because as you can see, um, as you can see, it is like quite gappy. Let me like maybe fix this so you can see nicely. So as you can see, um, you can see through, um, you know, it's a bit holy. So to close it off nicely, we are basically going to do slip stitching all the way across the top. So um, we are going to insert under the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through, whoopsie, uh, pull through the loop on your hook. Like that so again under the vertical bar yarn over pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook so again you're gonna yarn under the vertical bar yarn over pull through and pull through the loop on your hook so we're just going to do that in every vertical bar um, but what I like to do is when I yarn over to pull through the vertical bar I also pull through both the two loops on the hook because it's just easier that way and it goes a lot more quicker um, but if you don't want to do that by all means you can pull through one loop at a time like this um, so just pull through or yarn over under the vertical bar and then through the loop on your hook or you can just yarn over like that and then pull through yarn over and well under the vertical bar, sorry, yarn over, pull through two. So, under vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and loop on your hook. So, under vertical bar, yarn over, and pull through two. Under vertical bar, yarn over, and pull through two. Under the vertical bar, yarn over, and pull through two. Okay, so now I'm nearly at the end. I have basically four more loops to do. So again, yarn under the vertical bar, pull through the two loops on your hook, or under the vertical bar and then under, well, through the loop on your hook. Okay, so now again, when I get to the last like vertical bar here, or the V, I insert through both the front and the back loops, yarn over, pull through, and then, whoopsie, um, through the two vertical bars, and then pull through okay so now that has now neatened off the top edge as you can see there it was all nice and neat so now um you can just yeah you can just end off so cut the yarn yarn over and pull through and tighten that okay so now um you will just follow the same exact steps you are going to chain 35 
you're going to chain 35 chains and then bring up a loop in each of those chains um, and then you are going to do your return and forward pass for a total of 177 vertical bars or 177 rows of the vertical bars or Tunisian simple stitch and um, you end off in the exact same way doing a slip stitch at the top of each vertical bar and then ending off um, by snipping your yarn yarn over and pull through and um, tug it tight. I have laid the back panel with the right side facing down and I've placed the panel that I want inside where my hooks to go and I've placed that on top with the right side facing up. Okay, so the back panel or the bottom panel, the right side is facing down, the top side, the right side is facing up. So that way the nice um, the nice textured feel is on um, the right side of the hook case, if that makes any sense. So the hooks will go here, on the other side it will have a nice patterned work as well. Okay, now to show you how to um, join the borders. Okay, so now to join the borders, I'm going to use this beige color yarn. Of course, you could use any color that you wish. And I'm just going to use my standard crochet hook here. I'm just using a four and a half millimeter. You don't have to use a four and a half millimeter. But for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm just going to use a, a four and a half millimeter. Okay, so the wrong sides facing each other and the right sides facing outwards, we are going to insert our hook into into this top loop here or the side loop here so you can see these v's here this is because we worked into those like side chains and we side chains well yeah those side stitches and we inserted through the front and the back loop okay so we're going to insert our hook through the front of that and the back of this one um Try and get it as close as you can. And with the tail ends, I'm not going to worry about tying them in. I'm just going to tuck them in as I work along. Um, so yeah, sorry about that. Okay. So I'm just going to put the yarn over my hook. This is the way I attach my yarn. You don't have to follow the same way. But I basically just yarn over and pull through. So I just want to bring my camera forward. Okay. So, um... So now I have just pulled through the, the yarn through my hook. Oh, sorry. I pulled the yarn through the loops, um, through the front and the back panel. And then I'm just going to do a chain one. And then I am just going to um, do a chain one like that. Okay. So I'm just going to tuck those tail ends in. Okay. So what we're going to do is in the corner stitches, we're going to place three single crochets. So I'm just going to do one for now in there. When we come back to this corner to end off, we'll do two other single crochets in there. Okay, so I'm just going to go over these details for now. Okay, so I'm just going to go straight and insert into the next like little loop and then go through the next loop on the back. Yarn over, pull through two for the single crochet. Sorry, it's yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two. Okay, so I'm now just going to drop those two. I'm just going to like leave it inside hanging like that. Okay, so again we're going to go into the next stitch and through the stitch on the back. Sorry, my camera isn't focusing. There we go. Okay, so again, we yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two to form a single crochet. So again, go through the next stitch and through the stitch on the back, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through two. Okay. And we just keep repeating this process. But now when you, um, when you hold your work together, um, you should see there's a front loop and the back loop. So... Um, you should start to see that now the stitches begin to line up. Um, just make sure to go through both both loops of the front and the back, if it makes any sense, of the front and the back panel. Make sure to go through um, two of those loops, okay. 
so we are just now going to single crochet in basically every stitch until we get to the corner okay so now i'm coming up to my first corner as you can see i've crocheted along the the one long edge sorry let me just lay this nicely um okay so now i am coming up to the corner sorry these things keep folding outwards um okay so again we are just going to um, crochet through the front and the back panel until we reach to the corner okay um two more rows to do okay so now we are here in the corner actually it's this one um, I'm going to go, okay, so I have gone through the chain, let me just, there we go, okay, so here is my chain, here, or the bottom of my, um, of my panel, so I'm going to go, whoopsie, so I'm going to go into this loop here, and then on the back panel, I'm going to go through this loop here, which is basically also the first of the chain because there's the bottom of the chain and here's like our sorry my camera's not focusing and then there is the side the side loop for the first row so again we're gonna insert our hook into those loops well we already have yarn over pull through two to perform a single crochet and then we're gonna do an extra two single crochet into the same stitch so it forms like a nice like little corner there and then we can continue and again i'm just going to tuck this tail inside i'm not going to worry too much about it and then we are going to go so um that like little loop that you see on the top it's for that chain so we're going to go straight into like the next the next loop like that and then go into the next one there sorry this is a bit tough because i've actually gone through the actual slip stitches okay so again yarn over pull through two and through the front panel and then the back panel again yarn over pull through and then do a single crochet so we repeat that again all the way across sorry this is what happens when you form your slip stitches too tight or your chains a bit too tight okay so again we are going to oh and doesn't this blue and green just looks so nice together <laughs> looks quite pretty actually um yeah so we are going to continue this until we get to the other corner again and basically we are just going to put three single crochets into each corner so i will continue single crocheting again until we get to the corner so i will meet up with you when i'm at this corner okay okay so now i've got to the corner um I've just done my second to last stitch to the corner so now so I'm gonna go through this bottom or top stitch here and go through the top stitch of the back panel and now here's the corner stitch here so we're gonna go through the front of the back of front of the panel again sorry and then through the chain or the loop at the back and again we're going to do three single crochets into the corner like so okay so now again i'm just going to crochet over this thing once so again we just insert through the front panel and through the back panel 
and then we are going to continue crocheting until we get to the other corner again so again it's just a single crochet into every loop or well into the front and the back panel So again, it's just a single crochet through the front and the back panel. And now I'm just going to drop this tail end now because I don't really need it. And again, I'm just going to continue crocheting until I get to the other corner. So yeah, I'll meet back up with you once you've got to the other corner. Okay, so now I've made it back to this one corner here. We're almost at the end, so we have this corner and then crochet along here to get to the beginning. Okay, so I'm just going to um, do a single crochet into um, the last stitch here before I go onto the corner. Okay, so now I'm onto the corner here now. So I'm going to go through the front panel and then this loop here. That is the chain of, or the slip stitch row of the back panel. So again, we're going to just pull through the front and the back panel. And then do a single crochet. And then we do another two single crochet in the same exact stitch. Whoopsie. Come on. There we go. So there we have another corner. Then again, we are just going to crochet along the short edge. Then we'll get back to the beginning where we started off from. And um, this curling that you see, um, there shouldn't be any more curling once we finish. Um, once we have finished crocheting the two panels together. So again, I'm just going to leave the tail end tucked in i'm not going to worry too much about sewing them in um i'm just going to tuck it into the panels so yeah we are just going to continue crocheting until we get to the beginning okay so now i am now back at the beginning so i have three more stitches to do plus this corner stitch so again i'm just going to continue crocheting um through the front and the back panel and then this is the corner stitch i mean not the corner stitch it's the the last stitch before the corner okay and now into the same stitch where this where the first um, thin crochet is coming out of, we're going to go straight into there and do an extra two single crochets. Okay, and now we can end off. So we're going to go into the the top of the single crochet here. As you can see, there's like a little V at the top. We're going to go through it like that. I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and basically do a slip stitch. And then you can take your scissors, cut your yarn, and pull through like that. Okay, so now I am just going to get my darning needle. And what I'm going to do quickly... Okay, so I'm just going to... So this end onto my darning needle. Oh, man. Sorry about that. Put this on properly. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to come through and then just push it through like the fronts of um in between the single crochet stitches like that, if that makes any sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull that through like that. Um, maybe do one more, I think. Nah, I don't 
sound like that. <laughs> okay. So now that's kind of sewn in a tad, a little bit. I'm just going to push this to the back. And then I am just going to thread my darning needle again. I'm going to skip this first loop. And I'm going to um, sew back in the direction that I first started sewing. And I'm just going to sew around this corner like that. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to insert it. Make sure it's not coming through any of the sides. And then just um, and just like push your needle through. Oh, that didn't even work. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. So let me just thread my needle again. Okay, so again, I am just going to insert my needle in between the two panels like that. You can't really see anything. And then just push it out through anyway, like that. And I'm just going to snip off the excess. So, it's just kind of like that. And then just pull that back. And then the tail end should hide away. Okay. So now we have crocheted um, the front and the back panel together. So let me just show you here. Okay. There we go. So this is what it looks like so far. Um, so this is obviously the back panel, as you can see. Okay, so now... I am going to show you how to crochet the the little strips. Sorry, little strips like this that's going to hold the hooks in place. Um, so again, I'm just gonna I'm gonna use a white acrylic yarn, and again my five millimeter Tunisian crochet hook. Okay. Okay. So now we are going to crochet the strips that's going to hold the crochet hooks in place all the tunisian hooks in place okay so with my white yarn and my five millimeter tunisian hook you can use your standard hook but i'm just going to use this for the time being okay so again we're going to create our slip knot so again form the x yarn under the first loop and pull through the second loop pull that tight since it's on like the hook make sure it's a bit loose and then we are going to chain four. Um, so that's one, two, one, two, three, and four. And again, the first loop doesn't count as a stitch. And we're going to go into the back bumps of the chain again. So again, we're going to insert under the back bumps, yarn over, pull through, and we're going to keep the loops on our hook. So. Again, we're going to insert into the chain, yarn over, pull through, into the chain, yarn over, pull through. So now you have four loops on your hook. One, two, three, four. Okay. And then we're going to do our return pass. Again, chain one. Always chain one at the beginning of the row. Again, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. So again, we're just going to repeat the process. Um, we're going to repeat the return and four pass for a total of... 31 rows. Okay, so again, just insert, insert another vertical bar, yarn over, pull through, and again, I'm going to insert through both the front and the back loop of like the chain stitch or the beginning stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then again for the return pass, chain one, always chain one at the beginning, and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then we will keep on doing this, repeating this process until you have 31 rows. So now you have, so now once you have completed your 31 rows of um, Tunisian Simple Stitch, we are now going to end off, we're going to end off the exactly the same way as we did before with just the slip stitching. So again, we're going to the next vertical bar, yarn over and pull through two. You can as I said before, go through under or go under the vertical bar, 
yarn over pull through and then and then pull through the loop on your hook and again when going into the corner stitch or the edge stitch go under both the front and the vertical bar sorry the front and the back vertical bar pull through and then gosh okay pull through the front and the back loop of those two stitches yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook okay there we go and now we are going to leave quite a bit of a tail just for sewing so leave maybe about about 30 centimeters or so um it's rather best to have extra than being short okay so again we just end off okay so now you're gonna go off and make another five more of these um tunisian crochet strips um of 31 rows and four stitches um so it's four stitches by 31 rows now i am just going to get my tunisian crochet hooks again you can use this pattern um to make whatever hook size um sorry uh whatever tunisian hook case you want um this is just an example that i'm using okay so i am going to take my crochet hooks okay i'm just going to sort these out quickly in um numeratic numeratic order so from my um three and a half millimeter to my 12 millimeter i'm going to set them up in that order quickly okay so now I have these all set up in the order. I know they're a bit off and whatnot. Yeah, so I'm going to take my, my strip. I'm going to take the one for now. And I'm just going to lay this over um, the hook. So I've got my pin cushion here with all of my pins. Um, so now I am just going to um, pin is down in place so I'm going to roughly pin it um, about let me just on my camera I'm going to pin this one I think about here okay and the next one I'm going to make sure to like pinch this quite like try and get a bit of a close up here there we go okay so i'm just going to try and pin these strips down as close to the hooks as possible okay and then the next one so that's my 12 millimeter this one should be my 10 okay so again just Pin it down. Okay. So you just go along pinning the strip over the hooks, making sure that there is an even space between each of the hooks where the gap is not too big or too small. And just go ahead and pin all that down, and I'll come back and I'll show you how to sew the strips down. Okay, so now I have finally <laughs> sorted out the hooks and I have now pinned them according to the way I like it. Um, so yeah, um, so now uh, we can, I suggest that maybe we, um, we pin all of these down um at the same time i think it'll just be better that way um yeah so i think i'm gonna go off quickly and just pin down all of my straps um the way i like it according to the cords um yeah i would do it on camera but um, there's a bit, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna take a while. And I'm pretty sure you don't want to see me doing it. So as you can see, 
um my desk is in kind of a mess right now so you can also go off and do this just so that we can get all of the pins done and whatnot or getting it all pinned done and out of the way and then we can move on to sewing it down um so yeah okay so now once you have all of your strips pinned down i have only managed to pin down in the three places because i don't have enough pins to pin down each and every strip um so i have um pinned down roughly where i want the hooks to sit um so now to make my life a little bit easier i am going to remove the hooks and hopefully it'll be easier to um to work with to work with this and to sew um and to sew the strip down i have already started sewing the one strip down um i must say it's very fiddly <laughs> and i really don't know why i left the tail end at the top because i am right-handed <laughs> um so it's a bit fiddly for me um but yeah so we are roughly going to sew um where the pins are Yeah, so let me just maybe zoom in a little. Okay. So I am, um, so from where I have left off for me, you can just start at the top. You can follow the same exact, um, like kind of. Okay. So I have already gone into the stitch here. So now I'm just going to. Um, so down into the panel and then up and also the your rows can, can act as a guard to like where whereabouts you should place your needle um like yeah you can just follow follow the lines or So you can just kind of follow the rows um, and take it from there. So yeah, you can just go along and kind of um, sew the panel down, so I guess. just continue going um, through the panel and then up through the strap and then back down through the panel um, and then back up into the strap, sewing down the... Um, sewing down the strap to the panel. Um, so continue these steps until we get um, towards the end and then I will come back and show you um, what it's like towards the end. And then again I'm just going to sew down to the last. Let me actually go back down through here again okay. and then I'm going to remove remove that I keep losing my needle <laughs> okay. So now when I get to this stitch, I'm just going to go back through the panel and then again through the panel, until I come out by the pin. Okay, and then I'm going to sew it up. Like that. Okay, I'm just going to leave that tail in there for now. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this other tail end. I'm going to thread my needle. And then I'm just going to basically um, 
so back in the same direction that I came And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie these two together. Okay. Sorry. So now that's all sewn in. It's a bit uneven. But let's see if the hooks can go in nicely and smoothly. Doesn't that just look pretty? Okay. Look at that. Now that is sewn in quite nicely. I am actually quite happy with the way that looks. Yeah, that actually looks quite nice in my opinion. Okay, so now you just basically repeat those steps for the remaining um, for the remaining strips, sewing them down. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about taking the hooks out of this portion here. Um, because the tubing is quite thin, um, so I would just leave the tubing in and then just work my way around it. Um, so, yeah. Um, so you guys can go off and um, finish uh, putting the strips down and sewing the strips down in place. Following the same sort of um, steps as, uh, as I did with the hooks. Um, and yeah, and also like when you're done sewing the strips in, just make sure your hooks can, can easily, um, thread through the strips. Uh, so yeah, I'll catch you back when my strips have been sewn in and everything is finished. So yay. Okay guys, so I have now finished, uh, sewing down all of the strips. I have actually gone back and made... Uh, six more strips um, so in total I've made 12 strips um, so it's one, two, three. yes 12 strips in total um, yeah because I had found that um, when I folded this up um, the cord would hang out like that like quite a bit Quite a bit, quite a lot. <laughs> um, quite a bit. And it didn't look nice, it didn't look professional. Um, I really wasn't happy with this. So I went and I made um, a lot more strips. And as you can see, um, it is a whole lot better. Um, so there are all the hooks sewn in. Well, not sewn in. Um, but yeah, there are all of the hooks in the hook case now. So this is now finally completed. Um, so yeah, so I'm just going to fold this up now, so fold that like that, and then again over on itself. So there we go, and that is end of the tutorial. Um, if you like this tutorial, if you think this was helpful at all, um, then please give me a thumbs up, a like, and if if you could maybe subscribe to my channel that I would really appreciate that if you want to um, find um, not find if you would like any more content of any sorts whether it was crochet Tunisian crochet um, you could always comment down below in this video um, with what you'd like to see on my channel and um, and what yeah what else you'd like to see basically um so yeah if you like the to the tutorial if you follow it along nicely uh, please let me know in the comments or give me a like so yeah thank you so much for watching guys and enjoy the rest of your crocheting i guess